Hey there, this is Jake J. This video will be the starting point for Field Notes for Play, Fallout 4 edition, where I will be picking apart the wonderful, flawed, not so perfect Bethesda has made Fallout 4. Today, let's talk about the contentious state of mods. For the uninitiated, mods, short for modifications, are bits of content that are user-developed to change the game in some way. Mods are not always supported by game developers, but in the case of Fallout 4, they are. Bethesda has stated officially that they will fully support PC mods. They've created their own mod hosting server, released the creation kit, the tool they use to build the Commonwealth in Fallout 4, and have added support for mods on consoles, though with varying degrees of success. There is a problem here, though. The modding community is generous and passionate, but that community is largely treated with, at best, apathy by the companies whose games they work on. Bethesda is probably better than most, but there are still plenty of problems that need addressing. The first and biggest oversight, as far as I'm concerned, is lack of financial compensation. Modders invest time and energy into developing new content, but receive no money in return. Bethesda, to their credit, has attempted to address this problem. They tried working with Steam to set up a marketplace for Skyrim mods. When the storefront was rolled out, Bethesda defended backlash against the idea, even going so far as to state, we believe mod developers are just that, developers. The Skyrim mod marketplace was famously, or infamously, removed shortly after it was opened, with Bethesda stating, as an update to the same blog post, after discussion with Valve and listening to our community, paid mods are being removed from the Steam workshop. So, Bethesda tried to help modders get some cash but they failed, and they haven't tried again since. In fact, the EULA for Fallout 4 explicitly states, your modifications must be distributed solely for free. And I can already hear the response. Paid mods are horrible. Why should I pay for something I used to get for free? Okay, that's fine. I don't really have the time or patience in this video to rebuke that statement. However, there are other ways for Bethesda to support their modding community. Contract them for large-scale mods or DLC, financially support modding sites, allow or directly support donations through sites like Patreon, provide financial incentive for fixing bugs and submitting those fixes to Bethesda. Both Valve and Bethesda seem to have mutual interest in financially supporting the modding community. So I hope they're doing work behind the scenes to make that a viable option for mod developers and development teams. On that note, Bethesda opted to create their own modding platform instead of embracing one of its biggest modding communities, Nexus Mods. I was not and never have been involved with Bethesda, but as far as I know, they never reached out to Nexus or any modding communities to host mods. Okay, you might say, but Bethesda needs complete control over their host, and that makes sense. So if it was never an option for Bethesda to work with mod hosting sites like Nexus, perhaps they could partner with them in some way. Bethesda could offer some sort of mod sharing program where mods uploaded to Nexus could automatically be shared to Bethesda, and vice versa. Instead, a mod developer either has to choose between the two platforms, or they need to upload the same mod twice, neither of which is ideal. The lack of information and mod sharing between Bethesda and other mod hosting sites makes mod theft more prevalent. If a developer only hosts their sites on Nexus, then they would likely have very little knowledge if the same mod popped up on Bethesda's sites under a different name. When modder DD Productions 83 ran into this exact situation, Bethesda's head of PR and marketing, Pete Hines, stated that gamers should report the offending mod if they see it happen. However, if Bethesda and Nexus work more closely together, they might be able to avoid the problem altogether. Additionally, this puts the burden of policing on gamers instead of Bethesda. Finally, Bethesda is reaping benefits from the modding community with very little investment. As just a few examples, the unofficial Fallout 4 patch, which seeks to fix as many bugs in Fallout 4 as they can find, Texture Optimization Project, which changes the resolution of all textures to be more reasonable but still sharp, ultimately helping with performance. New Dialogue, which alters the dialogue choice menu to show entire lines of speech. These mods fix problems that many players have with Fallout 4. That's to say nothing of mods that contain new content altogether, like the workshop items in Homemaker, new areas to explore in the Boston Interior Project, or new game player experiences, like with the Frost Survival Mod. Developers have spent a lot of time creating these mods, and Fallout 4 reaps the benefits directly. You could say, that was their choice, and you'd be right. They are doing this for the love of the game, but Bethesda does not provide anything in return. 
Mods exist in a very strange state right now. They aren't, and legally can't be, commercial products, so their developers don't secure any legal tender. Bethesda claims to support mods, but of course they actually just mean they provide the framework for mods to function. Because mods aren't products that are licensed, regulated, or directly supported by Bethesda, it becomes a difficult prospect to use them on consoles, as Bethesda can attest to, due to the potential for jailbreaking or damage to the system. None of this is to say that modding is dying, or that mod developers are hurting somehow. The modding community seems to be doing just fine. However, if even one of these issues was addressed, could you imagine how much farther modding could go? Mods are an amazing aspect to Fallout 4, and I hope they can become even better over time. But I don't see that happening until someone in the game development community fights harder for them to be taken seriously. And honestly, Bethesda seems more poised to do so than any other company. All right, that'll do it for this one. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about this topic. Are mods fine the way they are? Do you think Bethesda should um, step up and do more for the modding community? Or do you think mods are actually are a blasphemy? <laughs> Let me know down in the comments. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, I will respond to those as well, um, just in general. My apologies for disappearing last week. Primary reason was because my son was cutting molars. I'm told that that is horrible, because I had to be there for him. Also, I have a little bit of a change in direction for Field Notes for Play. I'm going to be focused on one game for a series of videos, as opposed to being focused on one game for each video, and then never talking about it again. I'm going to find that more interesting. To, uh, hopefully you do too. Subscribe if you like the work that I'm doing. Uh, if you don't, don't subscribe. That's fine. It doesn't bother me. It just makes it seem like it bothered me. And I have terrible grammar. Please subscribe if you like the work that I'm doing here. And I will talk to you folks soon. Bye!